since you hit play on Wife Teacher Mommy, the podcast today. I want to make sure that you know that our free self-love challenge is happening in February 2024 right here on the podcast. The goal of this challenge is to make creating an intentional practice of self-love even easier than ever simply by plugging in your earbuds and listening for about 10 minutes per day. But for the full experience, you're going to want to get the scorecard so you can enter the giveaways, get the daily journal prompt sent to your inbox and join us for the live wrap up podcast recording. Yes, you get to join me in the studio and record the podcast together live. It is all free. Go to wifeteachermommy.com slash self love challenge to sign up. Again, it is completely free. You'll get a daily reminder with the free 10 minute coaching each day and your journal prompt, and you will see a transformation over these 14 days. It is not only going to impact your relationship with yourself, but as I'll teach during the challenge, it is going to impact every single other relationship you have in your life, your relationship with other people, your relationship with teaching, that energy is going to impact every single other aspect of your life. So sign up at wifeteachermommy.com slash self love challenge. It's free. Now let's get to the episode. You are listening to episode 103 of Wife Teacher Mommy, the podcast, how to teach STEAM and social emotional learning using Peter O'Meter with Trisha Fugelstad. I am so excited for this interview with author Trisha Fugelstad. We are talking all about her brand new release, Peter O'Meter, and trust me, it is unlike any children's book I've ever seen, and I am so excited to use it with my kids this year, and she has tons of free activities for you. So let's go. Welcome to Wife Teacher Mommy, the podcast. I'm Kelsey Sorensen, a former elementary teacher and current homeschool mom. And even though I've been a resource creator since 2014, I've realized that printables alone aren't all you need in order to thrive as a teacher or homeschool parent. That's why I also created this show and got certified as a life coach to help you finally kick burnout to the curb and feel confident with whatever challenges come your way. With the right mindset strategies and new teaching inspiration, you're going to be well on your way to your best teacher life. Now let's go. Hello, friend. I'm so excited to be chatting with author Trisha Fugelstad today. She has just released her new book, Peter O'Meter, and she did it with Teacher Goals Publishing, who's the publisher that I've just signed with as well. So it was really fun to talk with her about her writing process and getting her book out there because I feel like she's just a bit ahead of where I'm going to be with my book coming up here soon. And before we dive into more about her book, I want to share a little bit about how I'm so excited to start writing this book. I've turned in my outline and I got feedback from my editor and I'm just really excited with the direction the book is headed and all the things that you're going to learn from it. But what I want to tell you is that all the things you're going to learn from it, but before the book comes out, I want to share some of it with you now and even more than I've done here on the podcast. So I'm doing a free mindset masterclass. I'll be teaching it live a few times in September. If you're listening to it this now on, on August 29th, I'll be teaching it live a few weeks in September. So I would love for you to join us. And if you're listening later, I plan to continue doing this mindset masterclass, but you need to attend it live. So go ahead, sign up. There's a link in the show notes. I would love for you to join. You get free resources just for joining us. There's a giveaway. There's tons of fun stuff. Would love for you to come and be sure you're on our email list. So you can always keep up with all of that too. 
And then the last thing I want to mention is that now that I'm writing a book and I'm coaching our members each week, it's a lot of content to create. And I want to make sure that the podcast continues to be top notch for all of you. So what is going to happen is every other week, starting in September, will be a brand new episode, just like you've been getting all this time. And then on the off week, now that we have over a hundred episodes, we have a huge archive of content. And my guess is you most likely have not listened to all of it. If you have listened to all of it, I mean, major high five to you. I congratulate you. And I bet that you have really shifted your mindset in a lot of ways. If you've listened to over hundred episodes of the show, like that would be so cool, but there's a really good chance that you haven't listened to all of them. So we're picking some of the favorites from the archives and airing them again on those off weeks for just the next little bit while I really get going on this book. And I'll keep you updated once we get back to weekly new episodes, but I didn't want to leave you hanging each week. I still want something to go out that you can listen to. So don't write them off. Like they're really good episodes that have aired in the past. We're picking ones that have like higher downloads or that people really enjoyed or that were requested topics that people didn't realize we already had an episode for. So trust me, you're really going to enjoy those. So every other week will be a new episode. And then on the off week, there will be an amazing replay that was handpicked by me for that week that I really think is relevant for that point in time. And this will just be temporary while I really get my bearings with this book and make sure that I can hit all the deadlines that I need to for my publisher. Okay, so let's get to today's interview. I'm really excited to talk with Trisha about the book, Peter O'Meter. We just got our copy in the mail. Um, I believe it was yesterday. And I read it with my kids. And actually, um, for those of you who've been around a bit, you might know that my youngest is actually named Peter. So he was very excited. He was like, mommy, it's about me. And on all the pages, he's like, mom, is that one me? So it was really cute. But we read through the book together. I read through it with my two youngest. My oldest was playing with a friend. But it's just such a cute story. And the part that stood out to me the most on my first read, probably because I'm a life coach, was the tie-in to emotions and the fact that he has an emotion panel and that the kids, while as we were reading, were identifying his emotions. And as a coach, that is something I love. But through this interview, I learned that there is so much more to it than that. There's a full augmented reality part of it that we haven't utilized yet. I cannot wait to check it all out. And I just talked to her about coming to our Winter Educate and Rejuvenate event, which we aren't promoting that yet, but I'm pretty sure she's going to join us at the winter and potentially the summer event as well. So it's going to be a lot of fun. So without further ado, let's get into our interview with Trisha. Okay, welcome to the podcast, Trisha. We are so excited to have you here on Wife Teacher Mommy, the podcast. And to celebrate the fact that you just launched your new incredible children's book, Peter O'Meter. So welcome. Thank you so much. It's wonderful to be here. So excited. Yeah, I'm really excited to have you. I love when I get to have authors here on the show. It's a lot of fun, especially children's book authors. I think you're only the second or third I've had on the show so far. So this is like so fun. I love when we get to chat about your book, like our listeners get to hear kind of the behind the scenes about it and also just what we can learn from it like to teach about social emotional learning or STEM or all the different ways we can use the book to teach. So excited to chat about that. Well, I'm an elementary art teacher. And so I use books all the time with my lessons and my students. So I designed this book with that in mind, thinking how would a teacher or a parent use this for, for instruction with their students? Like what can they glean here? So I tried to make it obvious, you know, but, but not too um, artificial. You know, I wanted every piece of it to be embedded and, you know, go with the story. I, I love it. And your book is so unique where you have like the augmented reality. And I love how it has like, I don't know, it's very interactive in a few ways. I got my copy yesterday in the mail, which I'm super excited about. And it has like all the different like emotions and they get to like pick which emotion would be right. And then on the next page, it shows them if they got it right and everything. So we love that. Before we dive in too deep though, do you want to introduce yourself a little bit? Like tell the audience about yourself and your journey to become an author, your teaching, anything else relevant that they'd like to know? So I'm Trisha Fugelstad. I'm a K-5 elementary art teacher. I've been in the classroom for 30 years. And I just began this journey of being a children's book author um, after wanting to do this probably had been on my bucket list for at least 15, 20 years. 
And, you know, I used to host author visits in my district and talk to the authors and illustrators and just dream of one day being able to to do that and have the the time and the energy. So I'm here. I'm finally seeing my dreams become reality, but not just reality, like augmented reality, <laughs> which is a whole nother piece. You know, if you want to dive a little into like how this all started to do an augmented reality children's book um, really fits with where I was in my journey because my students and I in elementary you know, we had a class set of iPads, something that we worked on forever to get that class set of iPads. We had to do, you know, fundraising and we entered contests to win the iPads. And we finally, after um, like 18 months of working on it, we got a class set of iPads. And then once we had it, I wanted to make learning on them more meaningful in the art room. So I, I didn't want mm-hmm. to take away from the physical art making experience either. So we would make art and then we do a digital extension on that art project. And many times it meant trying to make an animation that kind of went along with our work. And the more we practiced this and the more we explored it, we realized what we were doing was what we called transdigital art, where it was both physical and digital. So for example, like we made robots and then we made our Mm -hmm. robots move. So our robot paintings would digitally blink and, you know, like puff or um, gears would move or switches would, you know, things would blink, whatever. And so we thought, okay, now that we figured out how to make art, how to make art move, how do we showcase it? And so we started to explore with um, augmented reality. So that was about, I don't know, seven years ago. And we found that if we can showcase our work with augmented reality, then you would be able to see the physical work and then pull up the digital experience at the same time. And it just showcased it perfectly. But then I was kind of like, okay, now I feel like I want to do more with this because this is an amazing way to like make art with kids. But I, I couldn't figure it out. I was kind of just... It was tucked in the back of my mind. I was, you know, um, thinking that is what I want to do. I could do it like on a Shutterfly book or something. So I did that a few times. Like I just assembled all of their robots into a Shutterfly book and then, you know, set up the augmented reality. And then we kind of pretended we had an augmented reality book. But I wanted to see more of that and and make it bigger and make more people able to access it. I love that. I love how resourceful you were. You're like, I'm going to, I can't find what I need. I'm going to order this from Shutterfly. I'm going to make it. Like, how cool is that? But yes, continue. No, I mean, it was cool. And it was really hooking my students to, and empowering them. So then I started to expand. I started thinking anything that's already print material, um, if I can make an animation of that print material, then I can hook my students with it. So before we do a lesson, I would um, try to connect that lesson to a children's book, and I would animate the cover of that book and set it up with augmented reality and then hook them in with it. Like We did that with um, the, the snowman story, and we were making a digital piece of art Um, based on the snowman, there's a scene in the book where they fly with their snow friends. They they build a snowman and then they go on a flying adventure at night. And so we recreated that scene. We did green screen video and we made these snow friends and all this stuff that we layered together. But then I um, had animated the cover of the book and they were like, you know, and then they saw it come to life with augmented reality. And then anybody who has that book could just get that code and the right app and see that experience right off of their bookshelf. You can go to the library and see it come to life right off the shelf of the library. And the idea of that was so exciting. And so the kids all wanted to figure out how to do it. And it just kind of grew from there. And if I'm excited about something, you know, they're going to be excited about it too. So I was 
I'm just really hooked on the idea of making physical art come to life in some way. I love it. That is so cool. And honestly, like I didn't even know this was a thing until your book, like so cool because like, it's just really new. I feel like. I feel like it is really new. And actually, I don't know another book that is experienced this way. There are books that have augmented reality. And that's how I found out about teacher goals. And that's where I um, published my book. Um, I was a part of the Green Screen Summit last summer. Not this past summer, so like a little over a year ago with Erica Sandstrom. And so as a co-host of the Green Screen Summit, we were pulling in these presenters and I was working um, on their bio and putting it all into the website when I realized we had somebody named Amanda Fox. And in her bio, she said that she had an augmented reality children's book named Marker Town. And I'm like, hold it. That is exactly what I would like to know about. I an augmented reality <laughs> children's book sounds wonderful. I need to talk to this lady. So after um, the Green Screen Summit ended, I set up a meeting with her and asked her, you know, is this something I could get in on? <laughs> what is this? How does it work? She sent me Marker Town, and I saw that it had um, these coloring pages in it powered by Quiver Vision. And so I had already been familiar with Quiver Vision. They had, um, they have this thing where they make coloring pages that come to life with a 3D model. And however you colored it, it stays that way on the 3D model. When it, And then you can interact with it in some way. So they've got this augmented reality piece woven into this book, Marker Town. And it kind of goes along with the story and adds more interactivity and actually layers on other kinds of learning into the book. And so I said, can you just sign me up for this? I mean, I want to do this when they're like, well, you're going to actually have to come up with a story. <laughs> That's an important part of a book, right? <laughs> so I'm like, oh, I've got stories. I've got lots of stories. And so, um, so yeah, you know, working with students for 30 years, a lot of what I was doing was storytelling with them. And we had many um, things that we were turning into videos and entering them into film festivals and international children's film festivals and local film festivals. And so we had musical stories and uh, most of the stories were musical because <laughs> we wanted to sing um, all of our curricular content is basically what it is. So um, the kids were singing and dancing and telling stories. And I feel like, oh, I could have, you know, approached them with any one of those as my book pitch. And so as I was doing this, um, they looked over my shoulder in my room and they saw my robots that I had painted and put on the walls. And they're like, what are those robots? Tell us about them. I'm like, oh, okay, well. Those are my emotional robots that I painted. They each represent like a different color on the color wheel and they each match a different emotion. And when you scan them, they um, you can pull up with augmented reality their emotion and they like show you more of their expression. And so it was mostly just examples for a student project that I had going and <laughs> And they're like, can you write a story about those? Because that would be a really nice tie-in with social-emotional learning. Yeah, I love it. It kind of brings it all together. Yeah. Two weeks later, I came back with the story of Peter and Reader. And it it has some of these original um, robots in it. So if you like hear the story, you'll see that um, Peter activates different emotions on his emotion panel. And they're named after my original robots that are on the wall behind me. <laughs> but yeah, so that's how it all began. And it's been a long journey. It's been over nine months now. But my dream actually became augmented reality. Isn't that incredible? Like you said, this is this dream that had been on your bucket list for what, like super long time. 
And you made it happen and you made it happen in, I mean, you're like, it was the labor of love for nine months, but you like, you made it happen because you put so much love and thought and creativity into it, I'm sure. So Peter in this story, he goes to school and he's a robot and he's in this robot world. But when I first sat down to illustrate it or even to just imagine what that world looked like, I was going through a lot of like growing pains. I was stretching my brain. I was stuck and I was uninspired, to be honest, because I, you know, as a teacher for 30 years, my classroom is not an inspirational, like, building. Like, it's in cinder block. It's low ceilings. The windows are, you know, kind of always closed (laughs) and (laughs) covered because if you open it up, it's right to the playground and it's very distracting and the kids, you know, just get, I don't know. So it's dark and I, you know, so when I was thinking, okay, what does this classroom look like? I immediately went to what my personal experience with classrooms looks like. And I was so uninspired. And then I I just kind of had a revelation that you know, why does it have to be like that anymore? You know, why don't you just think bigger? Why don't you imagine that Peter lives in a place where they lavish resources on their robot children and that the building is big and beautiful and the windows are large and, you know, there's built-in gadgets and plenty of resources for them to do their best learning. And so I was just so excited when I finally had that breakthrough. And I also was inspired by ideas that came out of retrofuturism, which if that's not familiar, it's... Yeah, explain that one. (laughs) Okay. So retrofuturism is a super cool era in um, art where people of probably like the 50s and 60s were imagining what the future looked like. So when you see the art from retrofuturism, you're seeing oh, yes. things that look like the 50s and 60s, but have gadgets as if they're futuristic. So it's the Jetsons, it's Lost in Space, you know, all that came out of retrofuturism art. And so when I went into that place in my imagination, it was just much more fun. And so there's a little hint of it you know, of actually those things that inspired me show up in little hints in that book as well. Yeah. I love how you were able to like break through that. Like you said, you weren't feeling inspired. You were kind of like, oh, but you're like, I have to do this. You know, I've signed this contract. (laughs) And you were able to like, you were able to like, you know, get awareness of that. You're like, oh, okay. I need to figure out what is it I need to do. And I just love hearing kind of everybody's stories behind writing their book or doing whatever big thing they're doing because there's always so much behind the scenes. Yes, absolutely. And I could tell you stories about every illustration, everything, because I, I really just soaked in to every page and I had, I felt like I had a lot of time to dream and think and, and make everything intentional. So there are stories throughout that I'd love to tell someday. I don't want to take up all of your time with all my stories but well I I can't wait to hear them all we'll probably have to talk about some of them another time too and actually I would love to like talk about other ways we can do that as well okay yeah and I feel like there was so much detail in the book like all these little details that I just saw from one read through so I'm sure there are so many more in the stories behind them because like even just the little fun details of there was at one point in the book near the beginning where it was like the teacher hit the mute button or whatever. Exactly. I just wanted to capture that moment when um, teachers felt that empowerment from <laughs> from remote learning. We all used to joke like, oh my gosh, I wish we still had that mute button because that was right. so powerful. <laughs> and so I definitely wanted to memorialize that in the story. <laughs> I just loved it. Yeah, I'm glad you picked up on that. So sometimes the um, the little things are picked up by the adults and sometimes the the funniest little things intrigue the children but I, like for example I um, had a lot of fun trying to figure out what recess looked like for robots and I was thinking that not all of the robots can climb stairs or anything because some of them are on wheels and so mm-hmm. that meant that we're gonna need some sort of um, universal design for like robots live in a place where 
if you are on wheels, if you like use wheels to get around, it's perfectly fine for you. You know, you never have to worry about stairs and you have no obstacles. And so that just made me really happy. Just thinking about a space where everybody gets to play no matter what. I love that so much. And that's what we like, I mean, obviously want for our students as well. So it's cool to really envision like what would it look like if it were perfect for everybody? Yes. And so I also envisioned like, what is the backstory on every single character? And so that matched their name in some way. And that also matched how it played out in the story. And I'm hoping that that sets me up for a series, maybe, you know, like, each one That'd of those members, uh, each one of those nine characters might have their own little story one day. And this is a foundation book for that. I, I love it. And I do feel like you created something unique and it totally lends itself to that. So that would be awesome if it becomes a series. I would love to see that. And I feel like we've talked a lot about um, what makes Peter O'Meter different. Like it really is different than really anything out there, like you mentioned. But is there anything else that you want to mention that makes Peter O'Meter different than the other kids books that might teach about like STEAM or SEL, but what makes Peter O'Meter unique? So I'm so glad you asked because this is, I'm I'm trying to think if there's a book like this, but um, as far as I know, this is it. Like, so the book is powered by Quiver Vision. And so they make the augmented reality piece happen. But they um, they did two kinds of augmented reality for me. So one is that 3D model of Peter that comes up off of the coloring page that's in the book. It's also mm-hmm. in the activity packet, which we could talk about later. But the um, 3D model pulls up the character of Peter, and then it's interactive. So you can explore his six buttons on his emotion panel, And see what happens to him when you click them because his face will change, music will play that matches that emotion, and an animation plays and shows color and um, in his panel. So he can cycle through six different emotions. And I think that's like super important for kids to see what happens to a face when it's expressing emotion and then be able to identify it and yeah. also connect it with music and color at the same time. So that 3D model is a unique experience, but then the 2D animation is goes back to my foundation. Like I like to make art and make art move. So I illustrated all the pages and then I animated all the pages And because the animation is a perfectly lined up design that matches the page, when you scan it, it makes the page looks like it's just coming to life. And so I set up like 32 instances in the book. And I think that number 32 also includes the book plate. If you get a signed book plate from me, that also comes to life. There's more augmented reality in the activity packet, and the activity packet is free for anybody like today. You can go to the Teacher Goals website, download it, and you can explore the coloring page with the 3D model, and also there's augmented reality games you can play in there. There's an augmented reality color wheel. At least you can color the color wheel, and then you can watch it come to life. And as an art teacher, I definitely wanted to have lots of art in that activity packet. And then there's a charade game. So you could like wear, you can dress up as, as Peter O'Meter, and then you can um, do a charade game with an augmented reality emotion panel that comes to life that you can wear. And then you can do some guessing back and forth on what is my emotion, like as if you're Peter. And then you can practice expressing emotion with your friends. That is so cool. So cool that you have this packet and that anybody can, yeah, definitely go ahead and download it. And we will add the link to the show notes so everybody can go and download that so they can enjoy all those activities. I guess, and we already kind of started talking about this, but how can teachers use the book for STEAM and SEL in their classrooms? So there are connections in the book that connecting to 
each part of the acronym of STEAM, and then social emotional learning is embedded throughout. So there is a time in the story where the robots gather at recess and they create a circuit actually, that they play a game called Circuit Maker. So that kind of introduces the idea of a circuit. And then in the activity packet, there's an actual circuit template that you can download and um, go through the steps of creating a little light up circuit experience. And then um, science is also embedded throughout because we use words like the vocabulary of science throughout and also we even talk about like the properties of metal that kind of shows so up cool. and there's like yeah. a little bit of a quiz at the back like discussion questions and um if you scan that quiz at the back you, with the qr code you can get all the answers it's, they show up in augmented reality so <laughs> Um, so technology is definitely, there is animation throughout the whole story. There's augmented reality. The E for engineering, you can think about the universal design of the il illustrations. There's a universal design challenge in the packet. Art, there's, um, there's a, a drawing of a robot game in the packet. There's um, the color wheel that we talked about. And then there's coloring pages. There's like all the robots, you can color them. And then math, there's um, there's a there's a math challenge in this story. And then if you draw ro the robots, you would be using geometry because they're all made out of shapes. So I also like would do a draw, I have a draw along lesson that, um, is on YouTube where I practiced it and I lead my audience through all the steps for drawing the robot and reinforcing vocabulary terms for geometry. So there's so many ways to connect. This is so cool. I feel like this wasn't just writing a book. This was like creating like an experience with like t being able to teach it in so many different angles and so many different ways. Like I'm really impressed hearing about all the different connections in just one children's book. Like it's pretty incredible. And how much thought must have gone into all that? <laughs> yes. And so I'm, I'm super excited and I'm really, I just feel like if teachers could take a moment to see what the potential is that they would love this book and find ways to use it. So, um, so it only just launched, but I'm starting to see on social media, people sharing back with me how they're using it with their students or their children. And so I just saw um, from a teacher in Indiana, he just introduced Peter to his kindergartners and he has these adorable little photos. And I just shared this on social media of the kids colored their robot on the coloring page and they pulled up Peter Meter, and then they posed and tried to match his expression. And so they took a picture of the model and the, it was so cute. And then I just checked my social media a couple hours ago and I saw that um, they used Peter Meter as a way to check in with their students and find out how they're feeling. And they posed with their children. And this is in Scotland. So I got a class set of photos of kids posing oh, amazing. with their Peter and Meter model and um, showing me their feelings. So yes, and I just made a drag and drop game. Um, so you can like do a check in really quick with your students. So it's like a blank robot so like no expression on the face and then you can drag the expression that matches how you're feeling today. Yeah, because one thing we've been talking about a lot, like even with my members inside Wife Teacher Mommy Club is like, we talk about even ourselves as adults, a lot of us like, you know, need to, you know, step back and be like, okay, what am I feeling right now to process everything we're going through? But also how do we teach our kids how to do that? And this is a great way to do that, to be able to like help them connect like how they're what they're feeling in their body to like their emotion. Yes. And that is also a big piece of it. Like every time that Peter in the story is asking, you know, what button should I push? It's because there is, he's sensing there's something going on in his body. And so 
there's clues in the story. And so it's a parallel existence, you know, like when things are happening in a robot body, it might look a little different than what it happens <laughs> yes. in a human body, like revving up and gear shifting. And But those are idioms and words that we might use to mm-hmm. reference what happens in our own body. And I loved the language you use because like, yeah, it is talking about like robot, but like they do still in a way describe how we would feel too. Just like you said, like one quote that you had in the book though, that I pulled out that like, as soon as I read it, I was like, oh, I love this. And it was Peter's mom, I believe. And he said, let the feelings you feel today act as your guide. Mm. And I loved that. I'm like, yeah, like, you know, actually pay attention to those feelings. I just thought that was a great quote. I'm like, oh, that is like a quotable right there. Uh-huh. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about that. Well, I was thinking about, it kind of goes back to um, a lesson that I did with my students called the Animated Glow, where I had them animate um, a symbol that represented the feeling that they had. So like it might be a heart or it might be flames or, you know, just something very simple. These are first graders. And then we made a robot and then we made the robot on paper and laid our paper over that glowing animation on our iPad so we can see the animation through the paper. And when we did that, what we were trying to show is that, um, I I guess, is that a metaphor I'm looking for? But I was trying to show (laughs) that it's okay to show the feelings that you have inside. So the paper, you know, the animation was coming from the iPad. So we've got, you know, the art, the animations that we've got this transdigital thing that's, it's not just cool factor. It's, it's okay to show your feelings. And then we used our words to say how our robot is feeling, which again is like parallel, you know, it's our robot that feels this way, but we know it's really, you know, you pick that emotion, et cetera. But um, it's okay to, to, um, to show your feelings. In that scene where the mom says, you know, let your emotions be your guide or let your feelings be your guide, you'll see that every time Peter has emotions, he has to make a decision at some point. You know, what triggered that emotion? But he goes into action after that emotion and... Um, it's not a bad thing to have those feelings. And you'll see he like actually made good choices, you know. I think you could read the book and every single time, like I read it with my kids, but like I mentioned before, like I didn't quite figure out the augmented reality part yet. So I'm going to on my list. We're going to do that right away. But I feel like with how many different connections you've made, like we could tell the whole story and yet everybody could come read the book another time and discover something new because you've created so many different angles and ways to teach with it that, yeah, I just think that's really cool. Thank you. I mean, I was just thinking about like, what is the best way to introduce this story to children? I haven't figured that out yet. You know, like, do you just read it plain without augmented reality and then go back and get a new experience with augmented reality? Um, There's that. And then, if I were doing an author visit, a virtual author visit, I would be sharing it in a different way because um, I have an animated version of it. So it would be coming to life differently as I tell the story. So what would that feel like compared to like all these different ways we could dive in? And then there's, um, I'm going to just put this out into the universe novel effect like what if novel effect decided to do a soundscape do you know novel effect do you know what that's about i don't know oh okay all right i have to explain because novel effect is so magical it's a it's an app company that takes your children's book and makes a soundscape to it and so a soundscape would be like all of the music the the background noise that um you know, just the the sound, uh, you know, sound effects that go with your book, mm-hmm. and then when you and then it's voice activated. So when you have the app open and you're reading it, it goes along with you. It knows where you are in the story, and it pulls up the 
the correct audio for your background. So it's a very magical way to read a story. And so you have to subscribe. And once you subscribe, you have access to all of its catalog of stories. And you can just pull the book off your shelf. It might already be in there. And then you could have that read aloud, read aloud experience with that immersive soundscape, which is super exciting and a totally different way to experience the book. So I just put that out into the universe. One day, maybe. One day, yes. You're putting it out there. So I believe, I believe, right? Yes. (laughs) I love it. Well, this has been amazing. And I feel like I've already learned so many things. Tell us a little bit about how our listeners can connect with you if they like listen to this podcast and they're like, oh, I want to learn more about Peter O'Meter or where they can grab the book all the things that you want them to know. Sure. So I am on social media all over the place. So I'm Trisha Fugelstad on Twitter. I'm Fugel Fun on Instagram. I'm on LinkedIn. And also I have a website, fugelfun.com. And if you want to find Peter and Reader, um, I link to everything on all my social media, but you could just go to Teacher Goals and find that their page is, and I recommend that you do that because that's where you can find the activity packet. So teachergoals.com, oh, yeah. find Peter or Meter, and then download that free activity packet and you're going to be set for a long time. There's 53 pages of so much good stuff. And then um, Peter and Meter is for sale on Amazon and all those other places like Barnes and Noble and as if I'm an official person that makes books. You are an official person, <laughs> not as if you I are know. an official person. So I'm cool. Still trans- I'm transitioning into that thought still. It's like very surreal to see your name on a book. Yeah. It's so cool. Such an accomplishment. So congratulations and everybody listening, make sure to grab your copy of Peter O'Meter. I definitely recommend it. It's such an adorable and fascinating book. And be sure to grab that activity pack as well. Okay, anything else you would like to share with where people can connect with you on socials or anything? Oh, I'm good. Fugelfun.com. The L for the E, and then you'll be fine. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you so much for your time. This was so much fun. Thank you for listening to Wife Teacher Mommy, the podcast. If you enjoyed our time together, be sure to hit subscribe so you don't miss an episode. And if you're ready to take the next step, I'd love for you to join me face-to-face at my next free virtual mindset masterclass. In this masterclass, I'll share my full story of how it transformed my teacher overwhelm and anxiety into balance, authenticity, and a true understanding of myself. And the best news, it'll work for you too. I'll break down my five-step framework, share inspiring stories that will help shift your mindset, and you'll even get to see life coaching in action. You'll get a free resource and a special opportunity just for joining us, and you won't be able to get this anywhere else. Did I mention this masterclass is free? You've got nothing to lose. All you need to do is sign up, add it to your calendar, and commit to showing up live. Go to wifeteachmommy.com slash masterclass to sign up or head to the link in the show notes. I will see you at the masterclass.